on, Wolfpack Nation. Welcome back again for our second part here of our Tuffy's team review of the 2008 NC State football team. Uh, if you haven't checked out part one yet, make sure to go back and do that first and foremost as we go through the first four games, which we really kind of dive a lot through. Is again, there's a lot to unpack in those first four games, uh, which are a lot of back and forth, like Greg was saying earlier. Um, so make sure to go check that out first and then come right back here. But with that being said, we left off here. We are NC State is two and two. Uh, heading uh, to a game against South Florida Bulls, who at this time were 5-0, and 3-0 on the road, and number 13 team in the mm-hmm. country. And uh, this team ended up going on one of the craziest stretches to uh, be one of the top two or three teams in the country at, at, at a point late in the game, late in the season here. Um, now, the one thing which I, I – the only thing which I really want to talk about, first of all, besides the fact we got blown out of our own house 41-10, to 10, uh, was Harrison Beck played the entire game. Uh, and so I, I don't, uh, I, I tried to take, I tried to do some research cause obviously that was, you know, odd because Russell Wilson definitely started yep. the, you know, the whole game for UCU. So I'm wondering if you could, were, were you able to find anything? Was it, what did he get injured or yeah, it has to be some kind of injury thing. Cause I mean, yeah. we all know Russell Wilson's character. I'm sure he didn't get suspended for any kind of stupid thing. Um, it had to have been some kind of injury, um, now we did talk that that he had that concussion the beginning of the season, so I'm, right. I'm not sure. I um, I, I tried I tried to uh, find uh, the game footage. Uh, I found it right before we went on the air, so I wasn't able to tune in and get the reasoning. But um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, well, and one thing too. Uh, yeah, replace the injured Russell Wilson. There we yeah. go. Yeah, Harrison Beck replaced the injured Russell Wilson. There it is. Um, but yeah, so maybe he played. 30- go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, I was going to say nine of 32 for 239 yards and yep. three interceptions. Yep. And apparently it also started to downpour midway through the first half, which led to some, some of the ugly stats that NC state had. So um, yeah, actually at halftime uh, NC state had negative 33 yards rushing and 63 yards total of offense at halftime. Yeah. That's disgusting. Go ahead. Yeah. Florida, uh, Florida state. Good news. South Florida's quarterback was Matt Groth, uh, who is one of their better quarterbacks from the from their history. Uh, he's probably Definitely. probably top five, maybe even top three. Uh, so this wasn't again. We talked about it. This wasn't a slouch of a team by any stretch of the imagination. You can't you can't just say, "Oh, it was South Florida." How did you end up getting blown out? This was a team that Jim yeah, Levitt yeah. uh, had a great defense. I mean, this is a defensive guru that their teams were really good. I mean, really good. Uh, yeah. They, you know, who knows how good they could have ended up being. Uh, he, their coach ends up getting um, fired for um, being a little rough on some of his players. Uh, they had a kind of a bad culture, but this was a team that was dominant. I mean, really dominant. Yeah. Well, and especially too, I mean, even offensively, I mean, to have 275 mm-hmm. yards passing, yeah. 245 yards rushing. Yeah. Uh, very balanced. You know, very balanced team. And no wonder they're one of the top three teams in the country, you know, once season, you know, was able to, run out but another yeah. guy that we you know didn't even talk about so well, which i got to bring up if you're talking about 2008 willie young yes. is another guy that i feel like is a guy that doesn't get talked about on no. an all-time list but yep. i would definitely say he's easily in that conversation of an all-time list yeah even with even with the strong of a defensive line uh class as nc state has had over the years you know yep. between you know the list goes on between tank tyler Mario Williams, yep. Brad the Chubb, but I would easily still say Jabulia Young is in that conversation. Yeah, and this is also a team that had Michael Allen Cash, uh, though he did um, see some limited time because uh, he had some knee surgery. But again, yeah. he was our best returning defense alignment. And uh, yeah, this mm-hmm. was a team that had talent. It was just a very young talent that just hasn't really, you know, other than Willie Young and um, Nate Irving. I think Nate Irving was like a sophomore junior this that year. And Michael yeah. Allen Clark, I think, was like a sophomore junior. So um, yeah, but yeah, again, this is a team that you could start to see and the wins that we were beating because we beat some top 25 teams during the season. Um, right. But anyway, we'll get into yeah, those on those games. Exactly. So now let's move on over to Boston College here. And uh, this is one that was a uh, see, this was a, a kind of like a so close here mm-hmm. on, uh, uh, you know, with with Boston College getting a. Uh, a late a touchdown a late to touchdown. win the game. Yeah, twenty two seconds minute. left in the yep. game. Yep. yep, getting a rushing touchdown. But thirty eight thirty one loss uh, to a four and one Boston College team that ended up being the Atlantic Coast uh, representative. Um, yeah, the you Atlantic know, division. Yeah. So uh, you know, I'm sure you had like the Atlantic 
yeah, division, not yeah, coast. Yeah, coast. I know. Yeah, yeah, you're good. <laughs> uh, rep. Uh, so, I mean, you know, not necessarily a bad loss for sure. And I mean, dude, holy smokes. Boston, Boston College, Chris Crane had 428 yards passing. Yeah. Holy smokes. Yeah. This isn't Matt uh, Ryan. This is, you know. Chris Crane. Yeah, I don't uh, even remember. But he was also the leading rusher. Like, he was mm-hmm. he was the entire Boston College offense the, that game. Yep. Yep. He, and then, um, yeah, he ran for 42 yards that game, so. Um, and the only head scratcher for this game, which I'm curious if there was injury to Andre Brown, but only had three carries for five yards. Yeah. Um, I'm assuming there had to have been some kind of injury. There's no way you don't put the ball in Andre's no. hands at least 15, 20 times a game. No. So um, I'm assuming. So that definitely hurts as well. But I mean, still getting 31 points up on the board um, should be enough, you know, for, for, you know, most teams. And so to me, it just seems like more of an off day uh, from the from the in-state defense to give up 38 points to Chris Crane from Boston College. Yeah, this but. is a defense that ended up giving up uh, 26 points a game, which ranks 65th in the NCAA out of um, 119 mm-hmm. teams. So um, mm-hmm. kind of right in the middle, but not good. <laughs> like Not good no, as a whole. No. Yeah, Because there were no, some lopsided definitely. ones, right? We talked about the 34 to nothing, the 41 to 10. Um, this is a team that showed a propensity to give up big plays and lots of points. Absolutely. All right. So let's jump on over to the Florida state game as well. We're kind of getting through this unfortunate losing stretch here. Yeah. Remember after- we talked about it, right? So we yeah. talked about there, they, we go into a four game losing streak. And so this will be number three of the four game losing streak. So, and this is the game that I was confused about earlier when I, when I talked about it in the first episode, we were, this is the game we were up 17, 16 going into the fourth quarter. So, but go ahead and Correct. take it away. Yeah. Now, so, uh, um, you know, for this game, so Christian Ponder for Florida State, you know, who uh, is a guy that is famous for another moment in NC State's uh, fans' eyes, but that hasn't come until 2010. Uh, but, I mean, a guy who was was young, I think only mm-hmm. a sophomore mm-hmm. uh, at this point, um, but, you know, ended up being a guy that was a three-, four-year starter for Florida State, so definitely no – no scraps whatsoever, 23-35, 254 yards passing for a touchdown, no interceptions. Um, but really looking at the Florida State roster in terms of who was involved, there's no names that really kind of stand out to me. So to me, it's just, I, I, I don't know. Not necessarily, it's, it's, from looking at the names, I'm like, it can be necessarily one of Florida State's more stronger teams. But at this point, they were 4-1 and one heading into this game. So... I yeah, mean, but they like, also they also finished the season like um, I think they were like I said they were the highest ranked team. I'm sorry, they, no, they were 21st at the end of the season, finishing nine and four, five and three in the conference. So just a yeah. just an average team, like you said. No, not not the not the dominant performances in the in the players that that we were accustomed to seeing, especially early on in um, having to play them in the ACC. But the funny thing is, they actually ended up the number twenty-one team in the country at the end yeah. of the season too. So, uh, so obviously they in that nine and four overall record they had, they must they must have pulled off some pretty big wins. Which I mean, with the sophomore Christian Ponder and with a bunch of guys that don't necessarily stand out to me. Not necessarily saying that they're not good, but just saying that more likely that means there's not any all stars on this team. Then, you know hats off to you know Bob, and us too because that's another thing too this is kind of obviously in the back end of the bobby bowden years as well mm-hmm. um when uh um god what's uh what's the coach's name that jimbo now it's like saying now jimbo yeah where jimbo really kind of started to be the head coach but but uh i think just uh Bob bowden has having a little issues moving away which you know hey listen he did have bad teams, you know. It's it's not like you know he was and he he wasn't going to get forced out, but anyway. Yeah, looking so, at their uh, um yeah. their their season, yeah, nothing really jumps off the plate. Um, they got yep. they got trounced by uh, or you like to say donkey stomped by Florida, forty five to fifteen, but yep. um just just an average season. Nothing nothing jumps off. They did have a nice yep. bowl win at the end of the season against Wisconsin, but that was about it. So the one thing which I will say from the NC State side, once again, is that Owen Spencer in this game was the leading receiver, three catches for 82 yards and a touchdown. So, like, I'm telling you, you know, Owen Spencer definitely way, way underrated when it comes to all-time wide receivers in NC State for sure. Yeah, you and, know, uh, and you mentioned Willie Young. He had two sacks in this game. So yeah. really great defensive effort by him, uh, 10 tackles yeah. and two sacks. Yeah. Um, 
I mean, it just seemed like to me, it seems like to me looking at the stats here, um, I mean, it's one for nine won. on third down, one for nine on third down for yeah. NC State. Um, you know, 13 to 25 passing, so not, not bad there, but seven penalties seven for 70 yards, no turnovers. So that's what I'm saying. It was just, I think, just third down in, 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 in efficiency. And then we were 0 for 2 on fourth down. So yeah. just, we just, just efficiency, just, I think that's what killed us this game. And then, uh, you want a year Carolina Panther greats, Graham Gano hit some long field goals in that game. Um, he had a 44 and a 53. State? Yeah, Florida State. Oh, cool. I didn't even went to Florida State. Cool. Yeah. So, uh, so, yeah. So yeah. that's, I mean, that's kind of your difference there. Um, yeah. You know, again, like I said, we were up 17 16 going into the fourth quarter and they outscored us 13 7. So, yep, to win it, which, you know, sucks. But now we're sitting at 2 and 5 on the season, 0 oh, 3 in the conference. And unfortunately, this next game. I think, does are we not already calling help. for Tom O'Brien's head at this point? I'm, I would probably guess. Like, <laughs> I would assume so, especially in today and today. If they had, if it was in today and a, today's day and age of social media, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. no doubt about it. Because definitely a couple of bad losses, but also too, you would easily come back and say once again, it is a very young team. So, yeah. and then we also just pulled off a huge. Because again, we didn't know what upset. we know now. Yeah, where 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 this is kind of the story of Tom Bryan, where he's very inconsistent. <laughs> and uh, so at the time, we're saying, well, we just beat you know number fifteen, you know, uh, you know ECU. Like like yeah. come on, so. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so then we go to Maryland and probably freeze our butts off. If I'd assume. Uh, no, it's so early. It's probably not that bad. It's well, it's in October. Yeah. Yeah. It, I mean. Yeah. You know, it's, you, you, so uh, living up here in Northern Virginia, I'm only an hour away from College Park. Um, yeah, you're right. Oh. It could be warm or it could be cold. It's just you don't know. But yeah. I don't know. But anyway, so this game. Uh, Luckily enough, I mean, it starts all NC State for the mm-hmm. most part. Uh, you know, Andre Brown comes out, you know, smoking. Um, you know, Russell Wilson for most of the game is solid. Again, 18 for 28, 187 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. So, you know, not crazy in terms of making an impact, but, I mean, he's effective. Uh, and, I mean, so Andre Brown, 15 rushes for 56 yards and a touchdown. The thing that still definitely stands out to me, which is – uh you know, something which I'm sure that O'Brien heading into 2009 had to have a conversation with Russell about was once again, this game, Russell had 13 rushing attempts, which yeah. I mean, you know, you definitely got to draw that back. I know that there's a little bit of, uh, you know, maybe excitement, you know, just, uh, you know, not to say composed legs there from Russell Wilson, but, you know, you can't have 13 rushes a game from a quarterback and expect him to be to have longevity. So, uh, but 155 yards total between Jamel Eugene, Russell Wilson, Andre Brown. Um, and then as as and, and as soon as I talk about Owen Spencer, he doesn't have a single catch in this game. But, right, you know. <laughs> Again, this is another game where we're right there at the end, and they kick a a twenty yard field goal to win it, basically as time expires. Yeah, you know, uh, it's a it's a, the, it's a theme. The, you know, mm-hmm. Re- really, with the exception of the of the South Carolina and the um, USF USF and, and and Clemson to a degree, we were in like all of these games. I mean. You you yeah. could see that again, if this was the 9 O ten team, you probably end up winning these games because it's just a as a matter of learning how to finish games. And this is a team that because of their their immaturity, not you know, because of being a lot of underclassmen, you're gonna see them not being able to finish games at the end of the at the end of, of the um at the end of the games. Yeah. Now the one thing which uh I gotta um take a look at here uh is uh the leading receiver for maryland was dan gronkowski who i believe yeah he he's part he's of the, the flying brother of Gronkowski's. Uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> so i mean that, that's that's a that's a cool name to have in, in 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 your in your books if you can have a gronkowski on your crew so yeah that's cool um but i mean again i mean for for maryland i mean you know they threw nine of 20 for 126 yards and a touchdown i mean yeah. so it was just a very blech game. I mean, from both sides. And once again, just like you said, just Maryland was able to get the, the last, you know, the last say and win this game. So, yeah. and very frustrating. Again, you had, this is a team where you had uh, Dave Meggett's son, Davin Meggett uh, on the team. He was a running back on, on that team. Um, yep. Yeah. The one thing we can always say is it always felt like Maryland was just like that, that pest, that little pesky 
the, like fly that was all he just wanted to flick it off of you and they, they just always 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 gave us a, a hard time when they were in the ACC I, always it just felt that way it, it kind of reminds me like I feel like Wake has taken Maryland's spot you know what I mean as far as that pesky little yeah. just like you just can't get rid of it it's just a fungus yeah. that just keeps coming back yeah, a hundred percent. I could yeah. not agree with you yeah. more. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but now let's switch over here and talk a little bit more of exciting stuff here. So now we go. Let's on go win some games. Years. Let's go win some let's games. Let's go win some games. Yeah, exactly. Finally, finally get that, get that, uh, you know, bump off the back here mm-hmm. and again get a twenty-seven to seventeen win at Duke, uh, which is awesome for sure. I think that's actually the last time we beat Duke at Duke uh was in was in 2008 which i mean we we only I played mean, them at duke one other time back right because that's when we were playing them once every seven years correct at their facility so, uh, but yeah. that'll change so yep. looking forward to this that. year we have a chance to beat them there that's right so um but for this game so russell wilson 13 and 25 218 yards two touchdowns no interceptions once again just effective mm-hmm. you know like yeah. you know russell wilson's not throwing the lights out but you know he's effective six you know rushes for 16 yards but he's not uh, giving the ball over, right? And and so that's exactly. the that's the key. You don't need to go throw four for four hundred yards and, and run for a hundred when you're not giving the ball up. You're not giving them the opportunity uh most times on a shorter field with the turnovers. And so when yeah. you when you don't do that, you give your ball club a great chance to win. And and, and the stats like we talked about earlier, the stats bear that out with seventeen touchdowns and only one interception. And that interception was, I think, at the Maryland game, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. Yeah, and the other thing which I want to talk about just real, real quick here is I see Daryl Davis's name for the first time here, mm-hmm. and he could have been er, you know effective earlier, but I just didn't notice it until now. But would you say that man, like thinking back on it, having Jarvis Williams, T.J. Graham, Owen Spencer, Daryl Davis, and George Bryan, like that's a heck of a and because you had that for the next three years, like dude, yeah. man, that is definitely a what if for sure because. Like I, I would, I would be thrilled with that wide receiver core any other time, and mm-hmm. especially adding George Bryant on top of it. So, man, definitely a swing and a miss having all those guys and Russell Wilson playing together for three years. Yeah, and but, I think that maybe that go, just goes back to your offensive scheming, right? Just not being able to figure a way out to get get your your playmakers the ball more because it, it definitely felt like yeah. a like you said a swing and a miss with like the TJ Grams and the Owen Spencers. You. You would have thought that that offense would have been, and you know, the other names that you mentioned, that that would be a high flying, high profile offense, and it just it didn't feel like that. It was it felt like a a, a slow grind. Um, it didn't feel like we went after the big play. It was just kind of a methodical offense, just working your way up and down the field. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like if you if you give me that team with Robert and I's offense, I would hate to see or Norm Chow like when Philip Rivers was here. I feel like that mm-hmm. could have been a pretty explosive offense. So, but again, I think it yeah. goes back to back to um, Tom O'Brien's philosophy. Like he's that's just not his Agreed. style. Before we continue, I want to take a quick second to tell you about our sponsor, Flatlands Jessup Insurance Group, that has your whole world covered with agents in five offices throughout Eastern North Carolina to help you decide how much coverage you need. Offering policies for home and auto, recreational vehicles, commercial, crop, health, life, and employee benefits. They are able to combine options to find a comprehensive solution that works for you. Flatlands Jessup protects the things you love so you can spend less time wearing and more time enjoying them. Find them on Facebook and Instagram at Flatlands Jessup. You can also visit their webpage at www.flatlandsjessup.com. So please make sure to go and check them out. No, it's not. Well, and again, it goes back to it again. We can talk about this till we're you know, blue in the face mm-hmm. about you know his decision about picking Mike Glenn over Russell Wilson. And that was definitely a piece of the reasoning, which is you're looking at Mike Glennon as a Matt Ryan 2.0, who he just Mm -hmm. took as a top 10 team and at one point, number one team in the country Mm -hmm. uh, at Boston college. And so you're just like, are you really going to pass up two years of Mike Glennon for one year of Russell Wilson after you lose a lot of your starters, you know, it's, it's like, "Mm." but you know, again, hindsight's always 2020, but yeah, so not really much here to say besides, I mean, Duke had Thaddeus Lewis, who had a ridiculous game, 33 and 17 passing yards with two touchdowns, 41 yards rushing. I mean, he was Duke this he game. He was Duke, yeah. Was enough. That, that seemed so. to be the, the theme throughout his time at Duke again, right? Like, he was the, yeah. the offense um, for a lot of Was the – yep. Exactly. Yep. So now let's move on here to Wake Forest here. Again, that pest here. Uh, and especially another past year in Riley Skinner uh, from Wake Forest, man. I, I, I just saw that name. And be like, yeah, oh, I did Riley too. Skinner I was like, oh, Wake Forest. Oh, yeah. Riley Skinner, uh, you know, way too, uh, all too famous for sure. Yeah. Um, 
And uh, yeah, luckily enough, coming out on the on the strong end, 20, 21 to seventeen, uh, a great defensive effort. Uh, you know, at NC State, uh, you know, low scoring game from both ends. But uh, you know, I'm looking at the play by play here, and uh, you know, State scored in the fourth quarter, yep. ten seventeen left in the yep. game, and then yep. and then uh, just locked them two, down. Two, yep, two stops, and then and then a turnover on downs, finished yep. the game. So again, uh, this is all defense. Uh, you know, finally stepped up to the plate and won a game for us. I feel like this might have been the game my dad and I went to. Um, oh, really? Yeah, yeah. This, I think this was like my dad and I's first game um, in like a long time coming back to state. I, I want to say it was because like the time frame looks familiar. Um, I'll have to ask him later, but I'm pretty sure my dad still has this game on the DVR. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Um, Which uh, the last thing I want to mention about this game is that uh, the attendance it says was at ninety nine percent at Carter Finley. It was ninety nine percent full. Which once again, you know, hats off. Again, it goes back to NC State football. You know, fans are the most loyal out there. The fact that we were four, we were three and six heading into this game, and yet we still were basically sold out for this game uh, against the top twenty five team in the country uh, in Wake Forest. So um, huge hats off there. But now let's get some more fun. Probably between. ECU in this game, it's pretty neck and neck, but you know, NC State goes to number 22 UNC and blows them out of their own house 41 to 10. And I think this is kind of like the, but I would say between this game and the Miami game, it's kind of like the just kind of the, the, the whipped cream on top of, of you know, of the cupcake. You know, it's yeah. like, you know, like I think you think about the coming out game for Russell Wilson's ECU, but then you look at those two games and you're like, yeah, no, that that's that's when we really start to see the Russell Wilson we, we've grown to love. Yeah, Here, and, here's something and, else before we get into this. Let's not forget for that we needed every game we could get to just get bowl eligible, right? Yeah. So, so, absolutely. so, so this is this is a team that their backs are against the wall if they want to play that extra game of the season, and then you, and then you're going to UNC, who's a top twenty five team. Uh, so it's not looking good on paper that that no. you're going to be able to. Uh, get a win and stay bowl, bowl eligible contention. Absolutely. So, and again, this is another great time where TJ Yates is a starting quarterback who goes over four against NC State. So love that. Um, and also too, cause I mean, you know, man, yeah. UNC had Keen Nix as well, who again is one of the all time greats for UNC as well. So definitely swinging the mess for them, but Hey, I love it. I mean, man, look at this list here. There was 10, nine different receivers for mm-hmm. nc state so many guys were involved yeah. uh, in this game yeah the owen spencer's tj graham's getting some some love here um jamel eugene got two touchdowns yeah so yeah. again just just a just wow just chef's kiss beautiful game loved every minute of it it was at that game and it was awesome here's the Could, thing unc had four it. fumbles and they lost three of them yeah well and the, even the better part is that in the second half alone NC State outscored UNC 30, 31 to 7. That's crazy. So, yeah, yeah I mean, we just came out of control of that puppy from, from the get-go mm-hmm. and never looked back. Uh, so, love that game. Enjoyed it. We'll watch it from time to time if I ever want to get a smile on my face. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's usually on my summer playlist getting me ready for the yeah. upcoming football season. So, I'm sure, like you said, it'll probably get popped up on the YouTube here in the next couple of weeks. Well, and especially for me, uh, when we're doing these, uh, you know, countdowns, mm-hmm. uh, you know, clips uh, that the 2008 UNC game will eventually make its way on there for sure. But just trying to is wait till we get a little closer. Is that the so that's not the one where we just got quote tweeted the other day by Russell because I know it was a UNC game, wasn't it? That was 2010. 2010. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, so anyway, so now let's move on to Miami here, uh, which was this the last time we beat Miami ever? I I don't I can't remember a Miami win since then, so it's I, very I agree. very conceivable. I know we've played them at least two or three more times since then. Um, yeah, we got we got uh, we got blown out in 2011, mm-hmm. uh, and then uh, that was a college game day day, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. No, no, was it? No, no. I know it was a Miami no, no. game that 2011. That, I know it you're was thinking a, you're thinking of college game day during Philip Rivers years. Was that was that when it was back that far? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good it was gosh. Back, yeah, um, yeah, no, because it was at Miami, and that was when David Amerson got cooked that entire game, and it was rough to watch. No, we had college um, game day at State against Miami. Yeah, two thousand like four. Was that okay, two thousand four? Philip yeah. was still there then. My goodness. Yeah, 
Yeah, that was that was uh, that was all too famous. But yeah, because um, that yeah, was like so Devin Hester. But this is another game where Russell Wilson just started to look like Russell Wilson. Yeah. Uh, 220 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, ran for 58 yards and a touchdown. Uh, you know, Trevor Graham <laughs> had 63 uh, yards uh, receiving. Uh, just, again, an overall dominant game between Andre Brown, too. Again, 12 for 93 and a touchdown. Jamel Eugene, 14 for 66. Yeah. So, I mean, just an overall, I mean, just, just ground and pound yep. for NC State. Yeah. So, and it, it was it was a rainy day, too. It was kind of a gross day. I still remember that game. And uh, um, so, but, you know, just like you said, backs were up against the wall. Mm-hmm. We had to get this game to get ball eligible. And we found a way to do it, 38 28. Yeah. And you look at their quarterback, Jacoby, Jacory Harris, and, and Robert Marv, Marve, or Marv. Um, yeah. Again, not the cream of Miami quarterback classes, right? Like you, no. all the names that go through Miami, and those those aren't the two of the ones that, that, that you think of. And, it, and these were definitely Miami's lean years. Um, so we, oh, we definitely sure. took advantage of them. Um, no, they were ranked 23 at the time when we beat them, according to this. So, um, yeah. So there's another yeah. another top twenty five team that we want. So I think, so I think we end up going like three and one, four and one against top twenty five teams. Um, so that's that's not bad when you, when you when you look at it how the season went, what the ebbs and flows of it. But the, but you know hindsight twenty twenty that's that is definitely the story of Tom O'Brien. No doubt yeah. about it. So well, I mean, how many games uh, did we talk about where we lost in the last minute? I think it was at least three. So at least. Yeah, yeah, so we frustrating. And so then on the reverse, yeah. I think we only won one in overtime. So in those one score games, we were not very good. Um no, we weren't. So but now let's wrap it up here at the Papa John's Bowl and PJ uh, Bowl in Birmingham, Alabama. Uh yeah, for the Papa John's Bowl and uh another bowl that doesn't <laughs> exist, rest in peace. I know, right? <laughs> uh it, it, it to me this is just I remember watching this I game on too. TV being super frustrated because uh, just again a rough you know not the best day for Wilson Wilson well, he, ends up, getting, again, he was, ends up getting injured and gets he got, knocked he out got of the injured. game because we were we were we had yeah. the game in control until he got That's knocked right. out yeah no oh my gosh like I'm looking at the stats now because yeah. we were up 17 to 6 yeah. in the first half yeah oh my gosh yeah now I'm getting this game confused in my head yeah no um, we were yeah. Russell was doing his thing it was just like they 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 didn't look like they belong there um it looked like Okay, we're gonna end up the season oh. five games, winning five games, and we're gonna take this into the next season in 09, and then Russell gets hurt. But go ahead. Now I remember why. Now I remember why I was frustrated because Russell Wilson got knocked out. Mm-hmm. They brought Harrison Beck in, mm-hmm. who sucked. He was terrible, over four and one interception. Yep. And then they brought in the ghost of Daniel Evans to try and, and, and rally you know, get NC State that win. Yep. You know, in his last game in NC State uniform. Yep. And uh, five for twelve for eighty-two yards, a touchdown, two picks. So. Yep. It, to me, it was just kind of an unfortunate thing that I think that once Russell got knocked out, it was just like it was just game over from there. So. Yeah, I mean, again, this is a game where you know we're up. Record scores, you know, thirteen points. We only are able to score six. They they kick two field goals at the end of the game with eight minutes and forty, and then one with less than a minute left. Again, another you know just a collapse on the defense where we had yep. we had a game in control and we just couldn't. We just we NC State stuffed it. So, yeah, absolutely. Well, and but if there is two positives, first thing which I'll say is I love that Andre Brown ended his in state career with the touchdown. So that's yeah. awesome. Um, and but man, Jarvis Williams, dude, had seven catches for 126 yards mm-hmm. receiving. That's unbelievable. Um, but we had four you know, turnovers back again. I know you're not going to win a ball game and, when you have four turnovers. I'm sorry. Well, and three of them being picks, and, and mm-hmm. I would bet that all three of those picks were in the second half. Um, probably, yeah. I mean, they they end up scoring twenty three points in the second half. I mean, you're yeah, up seventeen six at the half. Oh, I'll even do you one better. Those three what, interceptions the were in. The, Go ahead. So it was it was the last four drives for NC State were interception, passing touchdown, interception, interception. So oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, there it was. Huh? So that'll that'll be yeah, that's NC the way State to put did. the cherry on the top at the end of your season. <laughs> Yeah, no, hundred percent. So, you know, unfortunate way to end. You know what? You know, was a great finish and also to a you know a solid start even too. You know, to the season. Uh, you know, yeah. we you finally found that quarterback in Russell Wilson. Um, you know, who was able to pull off a big win against you know number fifteen ECU and then yep. went through a rough stretch. You ended on the right note and were able to get to a bowl game, which is that's crazy. To think about it. You were literally what one and two and six. Two and six. You yeah. had to win out to go to a bowl game, and you did. 
and then you lose to Rutgers. It's like, oh, come yeah. On. So, yeah, definitely. Rutgers only claim to fame to football as they invented college football. That's the only thing that people know Rutgers for. <laughs> yeah, that well, that and uh, the the guy. Oh my gosh, the the guy who uh, famously went down a kickoff and and uh, oh, broke you know yeah, the spinal yeah, cord. Yeah, he, like, um, he was like Eric. He was like one Eric of the first. Lagrange. Eric Lagrange. Eric Lagrange. Yeah, yep. you know the all famous cases, yep. widely known, and it's been talked about. Yeah. Um. And but yeah, that's pretty much it. I agree. Yep. So. Uh, <laughs> all right. So with that being said, uh, we'll, I think we'll finally wrap this baby up here. You know, I, as we, again, we, we finally have gotten through this 2008 season here. So again, next Tuffy talk uh, review, will uh, Tuffy talk team review. We'll do 2014 season and then we'll come back and we talk about 2009, uh, you know, and, you know, talk about the frustrations there. Cause there's definitely a lot to unpack there. Cause that, that season couldn't have been just bad because of everything that happened with Nate Irving. So definitely want to kind of right. dive into that, but with that being said, though, again, for our end, uh, you know, if you don't wouldn't mind, hit that subscribe button again, hit that notification bell. If you enjoyed this conversation, you want more of this conversation, uh, more of these conversations, I apologize, <laughs> hit that like button and give us a follow Tuffy Talk now on Twitter or Instagram. Also, make sure you go follow us on TikTok now, too, as we are on TikTok now. Make sure you go and do that. Uh, Greg, anything last notes, last sense to mention about this team, 2008? No, just, you know, I guess it, it just becomes that, we end up getting excited because we could see what happens. And then now knowing what we know, we are yet let down again for 2009 and then even 2010. Mm-hmm. So it's, this is, oh, this yeah. is the team that could have been right. Or the beginning of what could have been a hundred percent, a hundred percent. So, all right, y'all. Well, thank you so much again for tuning in with us. We will see you all soon. As always go pack y'all. <laughs>